How does film and television inspire author Catherine Gordier? Let's find out. But before we do, if you love books and the stories behind them, please subscribe to my channel. Interviews are posted bi-weekly on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the second and fourth week of every month, and you don't want to miss out. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher, and welcome to All About Canadian Books. This week's guest is Catherine Gordier. Catherine has worked as an aesthetician, cosmetician, sales agent, and in 1980, 1991, she followed her dream and began working in film and television. Catherine has been behind the camera, in front of the camera, and today this screenwriter and author will be discussing her memoir, Breathe, Cry, Breathe. It was published by Harper Collins, and here's what it's about. In the fall of 2009, Catherine's entire family were gathering for a surprise horror themed birthday party for their youngest sister, Julie, when the unthinkable happened. Breathe, Cry, Breathe is Catherine's devastating, moving, and hopeful journey through grief after the traumatic and sudden loss of three family members. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, Catherine, and my sincere condolences. Thank you, Crystal, for inviting me. It's, it's my pleasure, Catherine. Before we start talking about your memoir, one of my favorite things to do is to get to know the author. And Catherine, you have such a cool job. <laughs> so I'd love to ask you, you have said that one of your favorite gigs was being the rehearsal manager for Chicago. Can you tell, like, what does a rehearsal manager do? Well, first, Richard Gere. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, the rehearsal manager for a movie musical, um, I was responsible for all the, the actually the lighting rehearsals. Yeah. We had the theater set up, the Roxy and Velmas, where they performed all their acts. We had to pre-light that so they were ready to shoot on production day. I had to arrange the, the vocal rehearsals for Renee and Catherine and, and the, the dance rehearsals and Richard Gere's tap rehearsals. Oh. People maybe don't know, but even the close-ups on the feet, that was all Richard. He did all his own tap dancing. Oh, wow. I, what a fabulous project to be involved in. Yes. Well, yes. Uh, my husband and I are both lovers of, of musicals, so it was, it was an absolute dream job to be on that. Oh, fantastic. Um, now, also, Catherine, you are the eldest of eight siblings. Yes. And you it's a role that you have taken very seriously and you are very close to your family members. Um, in particular, can you tell us you have a real you had a, a really beautiful relationship with your sister, Julie, and your mom and your dad. Can you tell us about these three incredible people? Well, firstly, I don't have children of my own. And with the job, uh, the job that I have once I was in the film industry, sometimes I'd have a month or two off in between. So, so I would get to go and be with them and, uh, you know, and be with them 24 hours a day and go for a beer with my dad mm -hmm. and go golfing with him. He'd like to show me off, even though I couldn't golf very well. <laughs> yeah. And um, um, with Julie, uh, we we became we were really close she she looked up to me sometimes we'd shower together and wash i'd wash her hair and and we loved doing karaoke together and with mom you know it was all about getting dressed she loved to go out for dinner if you can imagine cooking for 10 people for her whole life and my father didn't really like to go out except to the local pub. So with mom, I love to take her out to dinner yeah. or shopping or 
as I have in the book, she loved to go anywhere that she might see stars. So I love to treat her to the film sets of which she met Richard Gere and Catherine Zeta-Jones and Queen Latifah. <laughs> Got her picture taken with Hilary Swank. Too. <laughs> and there's a really beautiful picture in your book of you and Julie on your wedding day. I think that was just my, my favorite picture. It's just so, it's so lovely. Oh, yeah. She would, Julie would do this thing where even though she was teeny four foot 11 yeah she she would put her arm around you and just do this little yeah. tap on your shoulder <laughs> it's like she's comforting you and she's this teeny little teeny little thing yes. <laughs> um and you know after reading your book and you have said this yourself, Catherine, you know, you wear your heart on your sleeve. Um, you share beautiful memories of your family in your memoir, but you also share some of your darkest moments as you're journeying through your grief. What made you decide to, to write your story? I was compelled to write. Um, I never thought I would publish a book. Mm -hmm. So, yes, um, I was close to my family. I, I'd like to think I'm still close to my family, but they all wanted to grieve in their own ways. And um, as a result, I felt very alone in my grief. Mm -hmm. And again, maybe what's not explained in the book is I was sitting there alone. They were all two and a half, three hours away. It wasn't like you could just pop over. Yeah. Um, but they, my sisters didn't want to talk about it. They, they would say, you don't have to talk about it all the time, but, but I did. That's how I relieve some of the pain. So since they didn't want to talk about it, I started journaling. And then as I was journaling and, um, uh, still grieving, I realized I needed some help. And when I started to get some help, it was a couple of my therapists, I call them alternative therapists, yes. that said, you should write a book about this. You could help some people. You could help a lot of people by sharing your story. And I wrote a draft, uh, sent it out to a few friends with a bottle of red wine, and they said, you've done it. This is a book. Mm -hmm. so, that's a Absolutely. Cool. I'm sure there are many people who will read your book, Catherine, and, and really appreciate it because everyone's journey is, is different. And as I was reading your novel, I was so in awe of your willingness to try all these different alternative therapies because, you know, as you write about, they, they worked they worked for you. They really helped you. Can you share um, something that you did that you felt particular or that you found particularly helpful, Catherine, with everyone? Well, I did, I, I became a bit of a medium addict. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like my agent called it hocus pocus, but, but that's only because then um, he hasn't experienced, yeah. um, he hasn't experienced receiving a message that you would know was only from your loved one. Yeah. So that was one thing, but I also tried this neuromodulation technique, neuromodulation technique, NMT therapy, um, which it, for my definition is more is like positive thinking and reaffirmation, you know, think positive, you have a right to feel good, you know, yeah. tapping, wrist tapping. And I, uh, as I wrote in the book, after I had the first session, mm -hmm. I started to feel better because those of us that have that have been in depression and deeply grieving. Mm -hmm. You don't feel like doing anything. You wear the same clothes three days in a row. You definitely mm -hmm. don't feel like sweeping the floor. Mm -hmm. Well, after that first session, I felt energized and I started cleaning up the kitchen and, yeah. <laughs> and other things that <laughs> I won't say on the air. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, you have to read the book. <laughs> <laughs> You've also um, 
channeled your energy into some very worthy causes. Um, can you also share that with viewers, what you've done? Yes, I would love to. And um, what I did not mention earlier was uh, little Julie had Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. And why I don't is because we never looked at our sister, yeah. like our sister has Down sy syndrome. Our sister was our sister that we adored. Yes. She, Julie was a special uh, Olympic basketball athlete. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had seen her play a couple of times. And after, after her death, I became involved with uh, Kingston Special Olympics. Mm -hmm. And to date, I have hosted seven fundraisers yeah. for the Kingston chapter. What some people may not realize is that Special Olympics organization worldwide could not exist without donors and volunteers. It would not exist. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize, I, I would have thought it was all government funded. It, it is mm -hmm. not. Um, I've also was have been trying and have not given up the fight to try to get a crosswalk where the accident happened. Yes, I've uh, been uh, an advocate for organ donation. Yes, uh, Julie's lung saved the life of a wonderful young lady. Mm -hmm. um, and I've also was trying to, and again, get sidetracked with life and trying to finish the book yeah. to, to adjust the, the testing for elderly seniors driving for their driving tests, because you can literally get into a car, well, I guess now it's 17 years old, and not ever have to take another driver's test in the car, actually driving for the rest of your life. Unlike a pilot, I heard a pilot interview uh, about this and pilots have to get tests. They have to retest every few yes. years, yes. you know, so I'm not, I'm, I'm not suggesting it for, uh, for say 66 year old seniors, because I guess when we're over, some say over 60 or senior, some say 65, yes. but 65 is the new 55. I'm talking about those that may be 86 years old mm -hmm. and have dementia or, or even 76. Yes. And, and if they have dementia or the beginnings of Alzheimer's, they might not know that uh, a red light means stop. Yeah. And this, this cause is very close to Catherine's heart because her sister and her mother were hit by a 85 year old driver who who didn't, who didn't see them. So uh, I really admire that you, that you've taken on that cause and, and everything that you do, Catherine. Um, thank you so much for being a guest on All About Books and sharing your story. Again, my sincere condolences for your loss. Thank you, Crystal. And I will put links down below in the description box so that you can purchase a copy of Catherine's novel, Breathe, Cry, Breathe. It's, it's a very moving read. Uh, it, it, is, it is sad, but it is also very hopeful. And for anyone who has experienced grief, I know I certainly found it very helpful. So uh, links down below again, so you can purchase a copy. Thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you, Crystal.